Welcome back. My name is Marcus, and today I'm going to talk to you about birds that inhabit larger bodies of water, such as lakes and oceans. Hopefully, you have seen my last episodes on marshes and ponds. Well, today we will look at some of the bolder, fiercer birds that prefer raging currents instead of quiet, peaceful ponds. Make sure to look around if you pass a lake or an ocean for any birds from this episode that might be there. And remember binoculars. So, let's get... Quack in. Whoa, that that sounded a little intense. But yes, let let's get quacking. This is the Barrow's Golden Eye. It is a type of sea duck that is part of the Golden Eye family, consisting of the common Golden Eye. Pharaoh's golden eye, and lastly, the bubblehead. They breed in wooded lakes throughout northwestern North America. It's bath time for these golden eyes. They will often nest in the same place as last year, so if you see a golden eye nest one year, it will probably happen there again. In the wintertime, they migrate to the coastal waters and will sell there in some of the bays and inlets there. They feed on aquatic insects and vegetation. Depending on where they are, they will also feed on mussels and clams. They nest in tree cavities. They are also territorial and will defend their territory from other birds. It appears that for these barrows golden eyes, strength in numbers is their motto. They are flightless after the breeding season for 20 to 24 days in their molting period and will pick small wetlands rich in food to lay low for a bit. They are quiet birds and only vocalize in the breeding season. Their sounds consist of grunts, squeaks, and occasional croaks. These Barrow's golden eyes are befriending the ring ducks of this pond. These barrel golden eyes lazily swim across the pond, minding their own business. This group of Barrow's Golden Eye swims peacefully up high in an alpine lake. While this Barrow's Golden Eye preens itself on a small urban pond. Unlike some of the other birds in this episode, the Barrow's Golden Eye is adaptable to a number of different habitats and is okay with lakes and ponds. Barrow's golden eyes can fly to speeds of 70 miles an hour. And they have a long life because they can live up to 18 years. That's a long life. Harlequin ducks are small sea ducks that breed in cold, fast-moving streams in much of eastern North America, as well as northern Asia. But the males are the ones that everybody loves to see. They are also known as painted ducks, glacier ducks, rock ducks, white-eyed divers, squeakers, and even totem pole ducks. Instead of nice peaceful lakes, these ducks prefer to be in the raging surf and rough white waters of oceans and streams. They will winter on rocky coastlines and only migrate short distances. They feed on mollusks, crustaceans, and insects. Since they inhabit cold waters, they have tightly packed feathers that insulate them from the bone-chilling currents. It also makes it easier to come back up after dives, due to the feathers' buoyancy. These harlequin ducks feel perfectly at home in these currents. The harlequin duck gets its name from the real harlequin, which is a colorfully dressed clown. And they're known as sea mice because they communicate in little squeaks. That's unusual. This species of diving duck is known as a lesser scop. 
They are also called the Little Bluebill or Broadbill. Why they call it a scop, no one knows, but it is believed that females give a call that sounds a lot like scop, and that is how their name originated. However, these ducks are not that vocal. Lesser scops are really similar to their cousin, the greater scop, but they're not as great. <laughs> I'm just pulling your wing. Comparison of the two is really hard, though. They are often told apart by the shape of their heads. Greater scops have a bigger sloping forehead, while lesser scops have a slight crest on the tip of their head formed by their curved napes. Lesser scops occasionally hybridize with other ducks, and that must look pretty weird. Can you imagine a lesser scop mixed with a redhead duck? Oh my. They are usually found on inland lakes, and instead of migrating to the ocean in the winter, they find unfrozen ponds or lakes to stay in. They feed on mollusks when they can find them in aquatic vegetation. Well, this scop certainly enjoys the water. They nest in southern locations near water, and there they will lay 9 to 11 eggs. The young fledge after 45 to 50 days, and the birds then migrate to winter quarters. Their range is sadly declining, even though they are one of the most common species of diving duck in North America. If this continues, their conservation status will become near threatened, or possibly vulnerable. This scop is trying to brave the torrents of rain that are coming down. And now after the rain is done, it's time to go get another snack. <sighs> it's tough being a scop. Lesser scops can reach flight speeds of 50 miles an hour. And they're the third most po common duck in Hawaii. Aloha! This is a bird that probably all of you know, the common loon. One of the most well-known diving birds in North America. It was even made into a coin. These birds are known as Great Northern Divers in Eurasia. It is one of the five loon species in the world and are efficient, powerful predators. They're amazing divers as well, but they are originally called loons due to their clumsiness out of water, which derived from the Scandinavian word lane. In North America, they winter on sea coasts or large lakes. They specialize in catching fish and will dive down as far as 60 meters just to catch one. In fact, some will steal fish from fishermen while they reel their prize in only to have it stolen. It is very sneaky. And when it happened to me, the loon got caught accidentally on my line. We had to cut part of the line. They can remain underwater for three minutes. And their diet consists of different types of fish, including trout, bass, and perch, depending on where they are. If it is in the ocean, they will probably feed on rockfish or herring. This is an immature young loon. You can see he hasn't developed his adult feathers yet. They need a long distance for takeoff out of water. Their calls have been often called beautiful, thrilling, mystical, and even haunting. Since their legs are positioned at the rear of their bodies, this makes for better swimming and diving, but not for walking. They will nest on islands or wherever they can find to avoid predators, but sometimes even that just isn't enough. Adults aren't usually preyed upon, and if they are threatened, they will attempt to use their beaks, which aren't that blunt. They lay one to three eggs, this loon swims peacefully across the lake. And this loon? Well, he just seems intent on scratching this itch. Or whatever he's doing. As you can see, when not learning how to swim, the chicks ride on their mother's back for protection. Both parents will feed the young and care for the chicks. This baby swims very close beside its mother, so as not to have any accidents. The 
young one seems tired, but is pushed by its mother to continue forth. Well, I guess that's the way life goes. Common loons can fly at speeds of up to 70 miles an hour. Whoa! That boot is fast! And the oldest known common loon left to be 24 years and one month. It lived in a lake in Michigan. It's crazy! Well, it's go time. Literally. This is one of the weirdest birds I know, the surf scoter. It is a large type of sea duck that resides in Canada and Alaska. They are known for the way they die for mollusks, with their large, oddly safe bills at the bottom of the water through heavy surf. As you can see, they form flocks on coastal waters, and their nests are often located on the ground near the ocean. There, they will lay five to nine eggs. Then the hatchlings fledge after 55 days. They're the smallest species of scoter, and I find their beaks, well, really interesting looking. For these scoters, it's just another day in the big blue. The great thing about groups this big is that it's harder for predators to pick one out. This scoter has caught something. Scoters feed on crustaceans and mollusks, while ducklings feed on invertebrates. Oil spills commonly affect this bird, and over the years, many surf scoter populations have declined, and spills are serious hazards for these birds. However, these birds are still common for now, and pollution is also a problem, as you can see. Well, this concludes the last bird of this episode. Surf scoters can fly at speeds of up to 60 miles an hour, and they have the weirdest nickname ever, because... It's the skunk-headed coot. Hashtag, that's a weird-looking bird. These birds will reside in large bodies of water throughout BC. So next time when you take a trip to the beach, look around for some of these birds. Also, be sure to check up on our website and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And for all you birders out there, answer a trick bird question of the birds of this episode on our website, and you will receive some birdless pictures with our signatures on them. See you later, and get ready to dive into our next episode soon. Birds are awesome, yes they are. Birds